So let's get the video from Linda Lee. Over to you, Linda. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Linda Lee. I'm an optics engineering manager from Gortec. Um, uh, it's a great pleasure today um, to be able to share with you our progress in the development of building a mass manufacturing capability uh, for augmented reality optics and how uh, we as a manufacturing can contribute to this rapidly growing field. Uh, first, uh, I'll give a brief introduction of what we do at Gortec. Then I'll focus on, on two building blocks of uh, AR optics, a uh, waveguide and light engine manufacturing capability. Uh, so at Gortec, we have a business model of um, being a high-end manufacturing manufacturer um, to help our customers um, in all aspects, uh, including precision components, from acoustics, optics, uh, electronic sensors to enclosure parts, and then um, to help them um, build uh, smart hardware, like uh, variable, hearable uh, home um, devices. And today we'll focus on viewable VR, AR. We also have our internal uh, capability uh, for high-end manufacturing system and automation equipment to facilitate the production line. Uh, so, Gortec is a proven number one uh, VR, AR, ODM, GDM partner. Uh, we have participated in all categories of AR, VR, including um, tethered AR, standalone, uh, tethered VR, standalone VR, and also augmented reality products, as well as um, some accessories, such as controllers and cameras. Um, so, uh, we have a successful track record of helping our customers. Uh, not only limited to this list, um, to deliver products to this rapidly growing market. So our uh, Gortec Optoelectronic System uh, Business Group uh, focuses on providing a one-stop solution for AR, VR, MR products. Uh, we provide solutions for AR combiners, including the conventional molded optical parts, uh, as well as um, um, the novel diffractive waveguide on a glass platform. Uh, we also provide light engine and projector um, or module solutions, um, which work together with the optical combiners to form a complete optical system in AR optics. Uh, in terms of VR optics, we have longer history. We've uh, participated in the evolution of different lenses uh, shown in the major products in the market from aspheric to Fresnel to pancake, a uh, compact pancake module uh, nowadays. So uh, in 2018, uh, we initiated a strategic partnership with award leading, a diffractive waveguide company, Wave Optics. Uh, as their uh, investor and manufacturing ODM, we provide uh, full support uh, in waveguide manufacturing, light engine module, as well as reference product uh, design manufacturing. Uh, since diffractive waveguide um, manufacturing is a novel field, uh, it involves fabrication of micro nano scale diffractive elements on a wafer scale, thin glass substrates. Uh, the production line is totally different from traditional optics. So together with Wave Optics, uh, we made great efforts uh, in the past few years in building a diffractive waveguide production line, uh, including front-end uh, nano imprint processing on a 12-inch uh, glass wafer platform, and also back-end processing, including uh, coding, uh, laser cutting marking, edge blackening, uh, edge blackening of the waveguide, and also stacking waveguides together uh, for different color bands. Uh, allows to perform uh, cosmetic inspection and optical performance tests. Um, so uh, the backend production line is already up running uh, since end of uh, 2019. Um, after the nano imprint lithography equipment settles in our factory by the end of this quarter, we will have a full production line ready in Q3 of this year, providing uh, 20,000 sets of waveguides per month. And this will be the first ODM diffractive waveguide manufacturing line available in the world. Uh, also importantly, um, is building a full task capability uh, for both structural and optical metrology. It's very critical 
uh, for this novel diffractive optics manufacturing. Different measures need to be carried out, uh, either at wafer level or single waveguide or stack waveguide level as checkpoints for each stage of the manufacturing process uh, to ensure high yield and high quality. We have advanced metrology tools, um, some of uh, them in our house already, and are investing in bringing more into the factory. So um, during this process, we have learned a great deal and accumulated some experience in this novel field. And today I would like to take the opportunity to share with everybody some myths we learned in the waveguide manufacturing and some true challenges uh, in our opinion. So number one myth we've heard a lot is diffractive waveguide is expensive because of semiconductor process. Although um, the nano imprint, you know, the hot master, e beam lithography, and uh, um, and etching is a lot, um, is part of the traditional semiconductor process, a nano imprint is a, a very important step. Um, but to compare with the semiconductor process, um, diffractive waveguide only requires one mask, while uh, the 45 nanometer semiconductor process line requires at least 40 to uh, 50 masks. Um, so, um, the guide uh, manufacturing is not even close to the simplest semiconductor process. So that's number one myth. And number two myth is manufacturing of diffractive waveguide equals nano imprint. Well, as said, while well, nano imprint is an essential step and the equipment is expensive, uh, we can see from my previous slide that post and process are also very essential and needs a lot of development. It's harder than we, uh, than we thought. Uh, for example, stacking process. If you have a good sharpness uh, in your image from one waveguide and we uh, stack uh, a couple of them together, how do you ensure the parallelism and the uniform uniformity of these waveguides? Um, that's not going to ruin your MTF. And third myth is uh, an Diffractive waveguide has low yield. Well, um, we are relatively unfamiliar with this novel field and are daunted by how high the yield is. We can say that end-to-end -end yield is above 80%, uh, but the most important thing is how do you define the yield? And how do you define the specs? And how is uh, your, the tolerance of your design? Uh, since there is no unified standard yet in this field, it's very hard to claim one number for the yield since we face um, different variety of different designs from different customers. So actually, um, what we think the true challenges are uh, as following. Number one is um, metrology and optical testing. So uh, when we uh, have different standards uh, and there's no unified KPI, uh, even no standard equipment to test each KPI, how we can accurately test and benchmark the waveguide we made? Uh, when we face especially a variety of customers with different designs, we need to make sure that we can accurately reflect the metric they care about. So building internal metrology and optical testing capability is very important. And the number two challenge is um, actually almost true in all manufacturing industries. is the trade-off between performance and manufacturing tolerance. So I won't spend too much time on this one. And the last one is, you know, when you're able to make um, 500K, um, and how are you going to scale up to like uh, 100 million? Um, so we think the material and equipment costs are still too expensive uh, in this field right now. For example, each nano imprint uh, machine is about $5 million, which can only produce about uh, 500K waveguides per year. It's okay to scale up to 10 million, for example, per year uh, if we purchase, you know, um, 20 nano imprint machines. Um, but what if we want to get to 100 million? That means we need to purchase hundreds of nano imprint machines, which means the investment is almost at an unaffordable level. So how could we tackle this challenge? Uh, one possibility is to drastically reduce equipment and material costs, uh, which needs uh, the whole supply chain to work together actually. Second is to move to parallel processes like a traditional display panel industry by spray coating, for example. And third option is um, to develop high index plastic uh, pl uh, substrates, which enables high cost, lower cost, and more flexible manufacturing. Um, 
while overall um, all this effort needs this whole industry um, you know to make the effort uh, together we need uh, all participants at different levels um, to make new innovations uh, so all together we can bring different we've got AR glasses to a mature consumer level market so uh, now I'd like to spend a bit um, time on the uh, light engine module capability we have at Gortech. So currently, uh, we are developing several kinds of technology, such as um, DLP alcos projectors, uh, laser beam scanner, as well as uh, micro LED modules. We collaborate with top level partners worldwide. Um, and uh, since Gortech has uh, diverse functional groups working together, including optical system design, um, lens manufacturing, in-house uh, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and thermal design teams, as well as uh, our driver and software development teams. So all together, we can guarantee a one-stop solution for module level support. In terms of manufacturing, uh, we, uh, except for the lens related, we also have SMT, COB, and FATP line for different process requirements. We also have our own auto machine team to set up the key machine for the line. So it's an important step on uh, active alignment for lens assembly and module assembly. Um, Gortech has experience uh, in uh, manual, semi-auto, and fully uh, automated uh, assembly line in terms of design, manufacturing, and operation uh, for products like LBS and the other categories like DLP, LCOS. Uh, some of the experience was accumulated from the traditional projector industry we used to work in. Uh, we also provide high accuracy and repeatability in terms of specs um, to fit different customer requests. Okay, um, in the end, hopefully, uh, I'll convince you so far that Gortech as a world leading AR VR product manufacturer also um, has 15 years in optical component system integration uh, with the recent four years heavily invested in uh, AR, um, VR. Our goal is to provide one stop shop for VR, AR, MR optical systems, uh, which can combine with our great experience as a world leading acoustic supplier, mechanical enclosure manufacturing, and also automation. We believe we can help our potential customers on all levels um, to quickly deliver high quality products to meet the ever growing needs in this market. And thank you for your time. Hi, Linda, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. It's fascinating to see what goes on behind, you know, creating all the headsets that we, we use. Um, clearly, there's a lot of stuff what I can see in your presentation. But I had a question regarding, you know, from an end user perspective, can you share some insights on what can we expect from the optical components industry going forward? What kind of improvements can we expect from what you're seeing uh, going forward? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, right now, I think it's an era of, uh, for many different optical technologies to uh, prosper together. It's really hard to say uh, which solution is going to win because every combination has trade-offs. Um, so I see a few solutions. They are competing against each other and each offering different advantages. I think within um, two to three years at least, uh, there's no uh, clear winner yet. Um, but definitely um, the whole industry is working together um, to bring this to a consumer grade market. Right, and uh, just got a question from Jacob Fugel here. Uh, he's mm -hmm. asking, do you support system integration for six degrees of freedom, uh, leader, camera, or other sensors on an AR headset? Uh, yeah, so uh, although I only uh, touch base about our optical uh, capability, 
Uh, but at Grotech, we support the food products manufacturing as well, uh, including uh, sensor, uh, component level sensor manufacturing, and also system level integration of all kinds of sensors and provide a solution of the whole device integration. Um, so uh, well, I can introduce you to the business group that's in charge of that. Uh, but yes, we, we do support that. Fantastic. I would encourage everybody to please send your questions in the chat while I put another question from my side, um, which is again a little generic, Linda, but I would, I'm really curious to know you share your insights about the rapidly growing market of AR VR products across the spectrum. Um, can you share some insights on like where do you see the growth? On which segments do you see? Which platforms do you see the growth happening uh, faster than the others? Yeah, uh, with the optics background um, in the optics field, I've seen like, um, first of all, uh, different display panels uh, to support higher pixel level, uh, better contrast, and then different optical solutions for the optical combiner um, to give you the lens for, for AR, VR. And they are, um, you know, becoming thinner and more compact to fit the consumer needs. Then there are, um, you know, different other driver technologies um, to make the streaming faster, for example, and lower power consumption. Um, on the other side, we still have the in, uh, exciting sensor field. For example, how, how, what kind of uh, camera solution um, is good enough to bring a full six of uh, slam uh, experience. So in that field, there are also multiple solutions uh, going on. And it's very interesting time to see all these technologies, uh, you know, um, progress together. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got a few questions coming in, Linda, for you. So I'll quickly jump to the next one, which is uh, a request to comment on the current limit on diffractive waveguides on the manufacturer and optical parts. Okay, that's uh, another very good question. Uh, so diffractive waveguide uh, is very unique and it's thin. It's uh, you know everyone knows it's compact. It can really bring you uh, appearance like uh, normal glasses. Um, but since uh, it's a diffractive element, the nature is it has uh, color dispersion means you will see some rainbow effects, and also uh, the index of substrate limits how big of field view you can provide. Um, but uh, the good thing is uh, there's you know, although there's physical limit and through uh, design and optimization of, you know, through the optimization of both your design and manufacturing, you can uh, still keep pushing uh, the technology forward. Um, so I think we have not reached the limit of optimization yet. Um, and, uh, you know, let alone physical limit. So there is still some room um, to push forward. Perfect. I, I have some time to slip in another question that came in just now, which is your MTF measurement is for a single wave waveguide or for the final device. Uh, so on the production line, uh, we have uh, at each step, we perform different combinations of uh, uh, metrology. So MTF, uh, for example, we do measure for both single layer and the final product. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Linda, for your presentation, for taking the time to answer these questions. I um, mm -hmm. appreciate your time. And that brings us to the end of our presentations for now. Uh, but at 1510 Pacific, we begin again.